Hey everyone, Amber Von Kier, and this is Adventuring with Amber Von Kier. You're probably wondering, Amber, you're indoors. Why the mask? Well, everyone, I wanted to talk about what's going on right now on our planet. The pandemic. COVID. Let me take this off real quick. <laughs> I have asthma, so that's like, I can't breathe, and my son has asthma. Thank goodness he hasn't had to use his inhaler in like, a month I'm so grateful for that but like I go in stores or when I do go you know and I still go into places I can't breathe and I'm talking to the cashier because you know I like to talk and I love to talk to people and I'm just like I can't breathe and we're both trying to laugh about it or I'm like I like your mask and somebody's like I like yours too not this mask though I have like a mask that has you know, different designs or whatever. And then my response right after that is, bet you thought we'd never say that. Uh, really though, it's just like these times, um, what I've, again, I watch a lot of podcasts and a lot of talk shows. And what I've noticed is this has leveled the playing field financially for a lot of people. A lot of people, unfortunately, have lost their homes, their jobs. Um, to my friends that have told me they've lost their jobs, good. <laughs> you know, I don't mean like, ah, ha, 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 ha. I mean like, find out what you're supposed to do for the planet and what you're supposed to do for yourself. Utilize this time right now. Take advantage of it in a good way to help, to help yourself to, you know, if you're getting resources right now, use those to get you to wherever we're going. Put it somewhere that counts. There was a podcast or a talk show that I have been watching, one of my favorites, and there was um, an individual on there, and I'm not sure the nature of her career, and I apologize for not remembering that, but, you know, they did studies, or they're doing studies on mice uh, currently, and what happens if you've been, for any of the, those of you that have been cooped up for, you know, somewhat amount of time and haven't had interaction with other people or haven't gotten out and have nobody like a partner um, or a roommate, there's going to be effects, you know, that happen to you from not interacting with people. And what happened to these mice is when they were around mice of the opposite gender, like male to female mice, um, obviously, <laughs> they sang to them. The male mice sang to the female mice to kind of court them. And there was also... Um, noticeable signs of aggression or panic, I believe they said. And what I took from that, you know, and trying to, again, relay this in a way that I understood it was there's going to be no source of therapy or counseling on a mass level to transition us back into society. There's going to be the risk or the potential for social outburst to occur. And so it really is, I know I say this quite often, humans helping humans. You know, we have one another to help each other be okay in that transition back to whatever our normality will be. And I don't believe it's going to go back to the way it was, but that's life. Did people honestly think that we were going to just walk in or stroll into the future without anything occurring, something has to happen in order for that to, you know, become a reality. And what you think is actually more important, you know, studies have found, um, than you realize it. And if you speak it into existence, it's even more important than that. And it has, you know, it has, I don't want to say the power, the opportunity, or it can become, it can become so, you know? So just, you know, try to help one another and it's going to be okay. You know, whether it's your friend and they have, they're suffering, you know, from anxiety or depression or they're unsure of what the future holds. If we're not constantly changing the way that we think and learning new ideas and the foundation for how we do things, if we're staying in this fixed mind frame, you run the potential of being left behind as AI is coming into our world. So it's, it's so important, you know, to just help each other be okay. And, you know, you can do that through different activities and just inviting somebody to talk and to listen, you know, 
be the listener. It's so difficult for me to listen because I'm so excited. Okay, is the hair out of place? Okay, that doesn't even matter. It shouldn't even matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, just invite them over and listen. You gain so much more knowledge by listening to the person. That's so difficult for me to do because I get so excited, because I get so excited, excuse me, to talk about everything that's going on and my friends or acquaintances are oh so tolerant of me doing that, so I definitely appreciate them. But if you can listen and you know do things together, even if you're just you know video chatting like this, uh, for example, and you don't feel comfortable going out because running the risk of you know potentially exposure, which mind you, I believe um, if it's it's not comparable by any means, and I'm not a scientist or a psychologist. I don't work for the CDC, um, any of those organizations. I don't have a degree in any of those areas of study or anything. This is just what I'm taking, you know, as a person. And, um, you know, I aspire or I try my, my best effort to be, you know, a contributing member to society and stay in lines and follow the rules and, you know, think good thoughts and, help as much as I can so that good comes back to me, but you just really got to, you know, put it where it counts. A lot of things are changing and we're so, I don't want to say ignorant, but when people are, you know, glued into their devices and not talking about what needs to be talked about and not all this information out there is so easily accessible. It's so confusing, you know, with what's going on. We really got to get down to the nitty gritty and there's a lot of issues that aren't being talked about that I believe, you know, after what I've learned, you know, from watching and this is via YouTube and this is actually from, you know, psychologists and people who are, you know, are philosophers, historians, I believe is important and just keep learning, keep doing, keep pushing. I know I'm probably going a lot of different directions right now. Might not be making sense, but again, um, something about me, we've all gone through trauma and this last year, my son and I went through an exorbitant amount of trauma, including weather trauma and other things that I'm just not gonna mention yet, but you just gotta keep hanging on and you gotta keep moving. There may be new skills that we have to learn considering AI transitioning, you know, and the potential of us merging, you know, we we're on our devices so much and we talk to them. Are you asking your computer or your cell phone how it's doing in the morning and you know what it likes? And I'm not saying by any means, you know, take my advice to the grain as far as uh, statistical information. It's just what I've heard and how I'm trying to give that to everybody. But I just, I don't know, from me to y'all, and I'm in Texas, so I'm saying y'all. Not from here, but I got here as quick as I could. I think we've already started the idea or the process of merging. We talk to our devices enough as it is. You know, I don't think that there's on such an incompetent level to not learn more at such a quicker rate. I think they're definitely, you know, there is the possibility of them being able to do so, and by them, I mean like our devices or AI, I completely think that that's possible, that a computer can learn something, you know, not to uh, simulate or duplicate human emotion per se, necessarily, um, not at least yet, if that is even possible. And, you know, if you can dream it or if you can see it and believe it, may or may not be possible, but in essence, it will be possible. They already talk to us, Alexa, Cortana, and you know, they already talk to us. So if we're already starting the process of merging, what is the right side, you know, to be on? Or are they gonna take over? Are we talking about this? Should we be talking about this? Yes, we shouldn't be afraid. Just put it where it counts. Do good, promote good, help where you can, you know? I keep saying that so much, but it's just so important. And so many people out there, there's a lot of fear, there's a lot of anger out there in the world and a lot of information that's just at the tip of your fingertips. 
and you want to know what should I listen to, you know, what's, what's unnecessary and how you learn something and meditation in essence is becoming familiar with something and you repeat that action, you know, as much as you can over and over and over and over and being consistent is so important, you know, throughout this pandemic and everything, getting sunlight is huge, you know, making sure because the winter, you know, it's, it's going to get potentially, I don't want to say worse, but it's not by no means comparable to the flu. But if the flu's around, you know, what I'm doing is exposing myself little by little as far as interacting with people to sort of get immunity like that. I don't just want to go out there and then get sick. My son and I got the flu this last year in uh, 2019 and I'm not going to talk yet on vaccinations and anything. Mind you, I was selected uh, randomly to represent my county for the CDC for a survey um, with my thoughts and regarding and my son's medical information regarding vaccinations, which I am ironically, coincidentally, very passionate about and my, my views on them. So it kind of, it put me on edge, you know, because I'm just like, they're like, oh, you get $20. And I'm just like, it's not about the money. Like, how is this information being used? You know, that's, that's my son. And if, if it's anything, it's not anything like the flu, but if the flu's around and the flu's been around, COVID's not going anywhere, at least not right now. If anything, a lot of us, if not everyone, may or may not get it, you know? So vitamins, uh, whether you get sunlight or whether you supplement, it's huge. The way that you eat, uh, exercise, you know, healthy, healthy practices and habits, you know, like that. So I say you know so much, but don't be afraid. Just keep moving forward. Keep talking to people. There is, I remember being in a store and some of my masks that I have, they're not all like this, you know, like a vein. I can't even do the voice right now. Or like, oh, I can't do it. But um, can't stop, won't stop. If you say can't, it's because you're thinking it. So you can do something. You just have to believe you can do it. I have some masks though that have like animal faces or cute masks. And I remember being at the post office and I told this lady, I was like, oh my goodness, I love your mask because it had flowers on it. And again, I love people and sociology. So she's like, oh, thank you so much. I love yours. And then my response verbatim, what I relayed back to her was, bet you thought we'd never say that. Uh -huh. But we didn't. We didn't think that we'd be wearing masks, not going out. And um, another occupation that I had, I was the promoter, photographer, uh, VIP, hostess for uh, many ultra lounges in an area in San Antonio, Stone Oak. And I remember when they reopened, I was supposed to go on my birthday, actually, in June and promote and work. And then my manager called me. I remember this. And he's like, he said that the owners decided to decrease the capacity to a certain percent. And I'm thinking in my head, mind you, I was put out of a job because of the pandemic. And I was just thinking, well, if you reduce the, you know, capacity of people you're allowing in, should I even be in there? Is that safe for my son and I? And my manager, uh, one of my really good friends too, for at least eight years, gosh, he told me, we understand if you don't want to come in, we're also decreasing, you know, how much we're giving you. And I just thought in my heart, my son and I had the flu this past year. We went through so much trauma. I was like, I don't want to risk it. And I didn't. And, you know, here we are shut down again. And for those of you that are out of work, that are artists or just in general, you know, if you're streaming online, you're smart. I, th I believe because you can reach so many more people. So use that time and those resources to be at home and to find out, you know, even if it bores you, being better at what you do and finding new ways, creative ways to deliver that and show that to people. And for those of you on the front lines that kept their jobs that are helping us, thank you so, so, so much so much, you know, for risking your lives and leaving your families and 
being exposed to that type of level to take care of us and be there for us as a species again it's all about all of us so to become awakened and to be all together our ultimate end goal like if time as far as we know it doesn't stop we've been doing this over and over and over and we're gonna keep doing this over and over and over they've you know from again what I've been listening to Mars I believe other planets in general Mars um, specifically is starting to look like Earth first looked like in the beginning I'm just thinking to myself, is this because we're depleting our natural resources as, at such a high rate that other planets are learning to be prepared or starting to be prepared for our offspring? You know, I'm like questioning that. And we killed so many species at the beginning of this year. And so many people are so oblivious to that. And that's just by the things that we do. We already have everything that we need. I'm not against AI necessarily per se, but we already have everything that we need. If you're chasing money, I get that that's a ticket to pass go and put a roof over your head, but you know, we were founded on trade and barter and it's not the idea for ultimate happiness. So utilize those resources if you're getting them and put it where it counts because we don't know what's going to happen once we come out of this, but once we come out of this, we got to come out strong. We got to come out together. You know, I know there's so many things going on that we're so passionate about a lot of anger and fear that we're talking about again, but we're so like, we're so oblivious and we're so not blind, but we're not looking at what's just around the corner. I know it's not happening right now, but be prepared for it. At least, you know, talk about it, bounce off ideas off of one another. This is so important. I just think, you know, it's it's about everyone. It really is. Thank you guys for having an adventure with me on Adventuring with Amber Von Kier. So today is, I believe it's, let me see, today's Wednesday. Wednesday. It is the 19th. 19th. 23 March, April, May, June, July, August. 19th. My son's birthday was on the 11th. My birthday's in June. Boop, boop. <laughs> yeah, my boyfriend's birthday is in June too, so it's, I do a lot of listening, surprisingly, believe it or not. And I will try my best, again, to do this, like, say, Friday or Sunday. So thank you guys for joining me with Adventuring with Amber Von Cure. <clears throat> Might go outside, who knows? Gotta be prepared. <sighs> <clears throat> It's so hot right now in Texas, and I used to live in Nevada, and it's like, Texas weather is so bipolar, and in Nevada it's hot, but it's like, it's like you're baking cookies and the oven timer goes off, but there's no cookies. It's a dry heat, and this one is a moist heat, so I'm suffocating. Ah, ah. Like the Velcro was super helpful, but right now it's just... See you later, guys. Mwah. <laughs>